Welcome to this first screencast on BackyardToading.com. In this one, I'm going to show you how to add some extra uh, features, I guess, to the user model. Because sometimes it just isn't enough to have a password and an email address to sign up and log in. Maybe you would like to have a first name, last name, maybe their birthday, or a username. So we're going to add that today. I already have an app with a that I created in Rails with a very simple scaffold that, that allows you to create a new post with a title. This is just really, really simple, right? <clears throat> so we want to add device to this app. Well, let's start off by going to rubygems.org and getting the la latest device version. Copy that to the clipboard, go into our Rails app, and put it inside of our gem file. Yes. Then we should close down the server and then run bundle. Yes, that should be it. Then you would like to go ahead and say Rails generate device colon install to install device and then. Let's just do what they say here. They give us a few steps that we should follow. So let's go into the config environment and development and put this in. If you want to deploy to production, you should put this in your production uh, environment with the actual host of your application, right? <coughs> As it says here. Then we, I already set the root. So I don't have to do that. You probably will have to do it. Then the notes class. I actually think that device or the rail scaffolds already gives this to you. So I don't have to do that. That, but you should probably do that. And then I'll just do it to demonstrate. Put it inside of the application.html.erb and save that. Then we're not using Rails 3.2, so I don't have to do that step. Maybe I should show you which version I'm running. Rails 4.2.4. And uh, then we would like to put this into our terminal, which will generate the device views for us <coughs> so we can customize them. Yes, then we want like to create a user model. We'll do that by saying Rails generate device and the name of our model, which is going to be user. That creates a user model for us and a migration. You can see here. Then we can say rake db migrate to migrate the database. Then command k to clear the terminal. And um, yes, let's get started. So we would like to create a migration that adds some details to the user. We'll do that by saying Rails generate migration add details to the user model. Then we would like to add details. You could add anything in here, but we'll just say we'd like to add a first name, which is a string, and a last name which also is a string. Then we would like to add a user name, which is also a string. And then maybe an about section, which is a text area. And maybe their birthday, right? Which is a date object. <coughs> then just hit enter. Let's check out the migration. This adds some details to the user. Adds these details. So that looks that looks fine. Then let's just migrate the database by running rake db colon migrate. Okay, now we are ready to implement this into our Rails app. <coughs> but before we do anything, we should add this to our application controller so that the device will know that we have all of these um, extra params or extra uh, user attributes for it 
so let's just add those we'll do that by creating a protect protected method inside of here let's create a method and we'll we should call it configure permitted parameters right in here we will configure the parameters for the sign in sign up and account update method so we'll do that by running device parameter sanitizer dot four and we will like to have it for the sign up to start with and then we'll create this that says you dot permit which is what we will permit the user to have in the sign up um, we want the user to uh, give their first name their last name and their username maybe I should refer back to the migration I created so I'll make sure I get everything right here's the username last name last name and uh, let's also give the birthday here and then obviously the email the password and the remember me and we can basically copy this put it copy three of them one for the sign in and one for the account update make sure you spell that right okay so for sign in we don't want the user to sign in with all of these attributes we'll just like for the user to provide their email and password so let's just delete this this is every time the user signs in to the application with a, an account they have already created then the account update that should give the user all of the attributes so let's add the last one which is the about section right and let's add that here boom put in a comma okay then <coughs> we just configured this uh, method then we would like to run it so let's create a before action uh, that is called this name configure permitted par parameters and we want to run this if the uh, or sorry if it's on the device <coughs> controller <coughs> yes that should be everything for the controller now we would like to configure the views so let's go ahead and do that as you can see when we ran the rails generate device views it created this folder for us which gives us all the device views so let we would like to update it for the sign up and account update so let's go ahead and do that under registration edit and new and here we would like to add a few attributes so let's do that or a few um, fields for the user to type in uh, the first one give it the first name and the text field basically just copy and paste this say the last name <coughs> then let's refer back to this username and birthday then we can say username this should also be a text field instead of an email field and then lastly the, the birthday so let's add that birthday and birthday and birthday that is a date field yes a date field there we go and let's see if this is working so let's run the server I'm gonna, just gonna run it on port uh, 8000 go in here refresh and let's go to the URL users dash uh, sign in okay it works let's see if the sign up works 
Okay, it works. So let's try to sign up. Let's go ahead and type in a name here. I'm just gonna say his username should be whatever. And then the birthday. Hmm. Hmm. Let's, let's say I was born here. Yes, let's see, say I was born here, <laughs> this date. Then a email. This could be test at gmail.com, whatever. And password, I'm just going to put the password as the password. Yes, we signed up successfully. Okay. Now we can see if it actually saved anything. Or we should actually um, create the edit view first so let's go ahead and do that let's just copy this over here so we won't have to write in everything again and in here we'll add one more field which is going to be the um, about section field <coughs> it's which is something that the user can add if they want that's really just their choice right so let's try to see if everything worked. If not, we'll say yes, it did. As you can see, it saved all of these attributes and we can access them different ways. And in the next tutorial, I think I'm going to show you how to create a custom user page for each user. And um, yeah, and if you want to uh, update anything here, you can, um, you can do that and it will work. Actually I see a little bug here. The about section should be shouldn't be a date field. It should be a text area. Yes, that's better. And we can say something here and let's provide the password to update. Oh yes, I forgot this one. The application controller. We would also like to add the password um Sorry for that cut. What I meant to say was that for this to uh, work, we should add the current password to our controller in our account update here. So let's add that current password and let's do this. Now when we hit provide our current password to the changes that we made, click update. It should update, and if we go to the users dash edit, it is here. So yes, this is it. The next episode, I will be uh, going over how to create a custom users page for your application. So I'll see you there. All right, goodbye.